the buns are plugged. Go. Uh, today, guys, going to be working on this. Uh, what do you call it? Bloody red maple, uh, coral bark maple. We're going to be working on that and basically repotting it. That's it. Um, I trimmed this in autumn. And there were some people that said that trimming it in autumn, you're going to get a massive amount of dye back. But every single one of these little twigs is alive with little shoots just starting to push out, even on the smallest, the smallest twigs, which are like not much more than one mil, they're still pushing out. So I don't know whether I got lucky or whether the couple of people that mentioned that just don't know what they're bloody talking about. Because you do get that in life, you get a lot of people with a lot of opinions that know bugger all. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, enough mucking around. I'm gonna repot this one today. It's really healthy. It's got a pretty cool root system. All the new shoots are ready to push, buds are coming out. So I'm going to put it in a pot, I'm going to put it in an oversized pot because I still want a lot more growth out of this tree. I want to really try and find a really strong leader that just wants to go and really increase the height of this tree. I think it's too short for what it is. I think it needs to really increase in height. So, repot into a bigger, well not into a bigger pot, into a nicer pot, similar size. Um, because it is doing this tree a bit of an injustice sitting here in this foam box it's not good for it it makes you not respect the tree for what it is and to be honest it's quite a cool tree the old bark goes almost like this whitish grey and then the young shoots are all this sort of red coral bark which is how it gets its name so anyway let's get into it I'll go and get the, go and get the pot for you guys um, I hope I didn't insult anyone by saying you don't know what you're talking about, but it's true. You get so many people with so many opinions, and a lot of them know bugger all, to be honest. Most opinions in the world mean bugger all, but there is that odd gem of an opinion that actually does mean something and you do got to be able to learn how to pick that out of the crowd and use that. Right, we've got no holes in this pot yet, so I'm going to drill holes. This is pool table pot. This is the only pot I've got left in my whole place. I don't have any other pots apart from small little tiny little buckets. So I'm going to drill some holes in this and this tree is going to go in this. Well over potted, way over potted, but I'm going to let it try and grow strong and healthy for the next couple of years and hopefully we put on some really nice strong branching and growth on the whole tree so let's get to it let's drill some holes in this pot um, i like to get my electric drill out and then let's clean this one off and get it in that pot so as you can see it's a massive pot but it does look better than a phone box, so, you know, that poor old phone box, that tree in a phone box is just an absolute insult to the tree. Plugging in my drill, get my drill ready. Now, you guys are going to laugh at this, but um, I escaped outside with the wife trying to make me help clean the house because we've got visitors coming tomorrow, and I forgot to take a cup with me. And I got coke and bourbon out the shed, but I didn't have a cup. So I've cut the bottom off the coke bottle. So I don't have to venture back inside. I hope a lot of people can relate to this because if I venture back inside, I'm gonna get wrangled up 
I'm going to have to do some bloody housework. So I'm going to sit outside here in the shed and muck around, drink out of me bogan cup, and enjoy myself. Mmm. Mmm. Bloody beauty. So I'm a bit scared about going back inside, but mind you, once this tree's repotted, I'll go back inside, I'll pay my pay my dues and help out the wife do some cleaning. But in the meantime, you know it's a Friday night. I want to have a bit of fun. I don't want to be straight away getting home from work, cleaning the bloody house, do I? So here we go. Enough mucking around, no more mucking around, Sammy. You're getting out of control, mate. Let's drill some holes. Um, I'll see if I can hold it up in there for you guys to see. But basically, this is a diamond cutter circle bit. This is a slate pot. And I'm going to put, say, four drainage holes around the place. There we go. Simple as that, four holes in the bottom of the pot. Got our bits of slate. And we've got our drain trowel, so that's it. Easy as that. Four holes done. This, uh, this liquid nails is so strong. This pot weighs a ton, but you can still just hold it up like that. Great stuff, right. So I'll go and get some drainage screens. Um, not quite organized because I was busy making this, this, uh, not, you wouldn't call it a coxer. You'd call it some bloody, some weird name. In another 10 years, all those hippies out there will be cutting off bottom of Coke bottles. It'll be a cool, trendy thing to do. Like their bloody jam jars. Right, I'm gonna put some mesh in the bottom of that one and then let's, uh, you know, then let's clean up the tree. So, what I might do is I'm gonna double up because this mesh is pretty coarse. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Cut a big square like that. Probably in the way you like. I'm going to cut in half that way. Yeah, I do ham it up a bit, you know. The wife is pretty forgiving, but at the same time, she was semi serious. Get in there and give her a hand. And I will. I'm just not quite ready yet. Right, so we got our four screens over the top, and then we're just going to pour a light, you know, or a medium sort of dusting of potting mix on the bottom of that. I'll do that. Might as well do that now. Get ready. All right, let's cut a hole. So we're putting our cactus and succulent mix in here and I'll just literally put a good laugh on the bottom because this pot is going to be well oversized remember so I can afford to put a fair bit in there. Right, so now what we're going to do is get it out of this pot. Ooh. Bloody beauty. Get it out of this pot. There you go. And now we're going to rake the roots. Um, I don't know how long it's been in the pot for. I think a fair while. Um, not 
100% sure. Um, if I was really enthused, I could probably go back and look at some old footage and find out how long exactly. Um, I think a fair while. But anyway, the plan would be to put it in a half nicer pot so that basically so I have more respect for the tree. Sometimes I find if you have a tree in a nursery pot, yeah they do just as well, if not better. But because because they are in such a cheap, you know, mediocre pot, you don't really think of them the same, you don't treat them the same, you don't look after them the same, you don't keep an eye on them the same. None of that, you know, so Sometimes when you get up to, you know, the stage of, you've already got your trunk and you want to start developing it, sometimes you are better off trying to put it into a bonsai pot and develop it in a bonsai pot because it does mean that your care for the tree is at a fairly, fair much higher level, you know. Fair much higher level, does that make sense? I don't know, but it does to me. And basically, I'm just going to carefully rake the roots out radially for a little bit just to get rid of some bulk. Okay, we're dirtying up the shed again, but that's alright. We'll suss it out. Alright, so we're just going to radially, radially, rad, radially go around this tree. Bit of a, bit of a tongue twister for a simple mind like myself. I have a very, very simple mind. And you know, I might have, I have a lot of trouble getting my head around some sort of words and things, but you know, I've always found for me, I've always found practical work a lot easier, and you know, trying to be smart and say smart things just does not come to me at all, as you guys probably have noticed by now very simple sort of a person. Um, practical things, you know, I just get in there and get it done and it seems to work out most of the time. Wow, there is some roots. Look at that, that's, that's how lazy I was last time. I just put a big mesh across the whole bottom of the pot. in here. See, another mesh. So basically I'm just going to rake out underneath here, just carefully. I might keep some of this soil because this soil is not bad. And keep some of it for some, you know, some cuttings or something else that I do. And it was actually still growing quite strongly. I just started feeling sorry for this poor tree stuck in a phone box. Even though it's probably going to be happier in a phone box. I didn't feel like I was treating it very nice to leave it in there. Pretty happy with how the raking's going. I think we're nearly ready for the hose. So basically, I like to rake for a while, do the hose. Um, if you have a really fat root system, this one here is pretty easy to rake out. But some trees have a really, they really mat up really bad. And when a tree mats up bad, that's when I do my 
technique of basically take a slice of cake off the bottom but because this one here is reasonably tangle free okay, um, it's reasonably easy just to rake it out sideways hose it out and then cut some off so there you go it's that clean up this mess absolute mess here got a turntable underneath here somewhere Adrian Eggleton's spinning tree turntable check them out just google search Adrian Eggleton's spinning tree turntable it'll come up and we'll give you a link to go to his store and buy one of these stainless steel turntables best thing ever I know that I'll never need another turntable in my life seriously a once in a lifetime investment for less than a hundred bucks for the big one and you've got it forever so it's a no-brainer so no-brainer check it out right I'm just gonna go and hose that one out and then I'll be back with it all hosed out cheers okay guys you guys are looking at this the same time I am as far as I haven't had a look at it I just went and washed it in the dark and came back and here we have it so what do we do now well look I think we just chop good layer of roots off the bottom to help reinvigorate it a bit chop everything back a little bit shorter to help with divisions um, these are proper root scissors so they're designed to take a bit more roughness and if they're not super sharp it's not a big deal although don't let them get too blunt because the sharper your scissors the less trauma it gives the tree and the less trauma it gives the uh, root system of your tree and the sharper the cut the less um, I guess infection or whatever in the root system yeah, anyway you get the idea just chop it back a bit get rid of some main ones and then what we can do now now we got rid of some main ones there is I might even get the knob cutters out and just try and find where some big roots go down deep into the pot because some of those might need a dressing because there is a few big ones there so let's get the bigger cutters out probably use something like the knob cutters okay good old knob cutters and basically where I find a big heavy root like I hope you guys can see some of this but in here big heavy root here don't need that anymore let's get rid of that um, as you can see too I've left dirt in the middle heart of this tree and I always believe I'm leaving some in the middle and if a tree gets too thick then you just cut some V's in to get some new soil in, some new roots. But I don't believe I'm completely bare rooting it every single time you do it. I do believe in leaving some of the old dirt there. Um, they just, I don't know. In my opinion, they seem to recover slightly better, slightly faster. Put on quicker growth the next year. Another big one in here. Get rid of that. But each to your own, you know. Whatever you whatever you find out in your own tree, and how you like to do it, that's up to you. You know. Looking after these little trees can be done so many different ways, so many different methods of looking after a little tree. Um to be honest, you know, I treat them so similar to a pot plant that it's 
you know, most people don't believe that you can just treat them like a pot plant. Just water them and put them in a similar sort of mix and look after them like a pot plant, but you can. And that's how I seem to do it most of the time. Now we've got some really quirky roots here, which is really cool. Another one that comes back across here, which is fine. Um, got some nice roots out here. But we've got this one root here that crosses everything. So let's chop it back short and then see if it divides. Okay, so there's that little root. Don't want, don't want crazy crossing roots. Here it's dividing out pretty well. Everywhere. You know, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm very, very happy with it actually, how it's growing. Pretty cool root system. Um, front of the trees there somewhere. I think maybe even there. Some cool roots. Really happy with it. I don't have to trim bugger all. You know, it's pretty going pretty well. Going really well. So there you go. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to put it into the new pot. Just shuffle you guys over there. Now, if you noticed on my other homemade pots, I uh, sprayed with a clear coat polyurethane spray, and that was to give it a darker look. But I think with this, the red bark of the maple, especially on the new growth and the nice leaves that it gets, I think the lighter coloured pot will actually do it well. So I'm going to leave the pot that colour. Just going to wiggle it in somewhere. I don't know, somewhere where I'm happy with it. That's angle. I don't know, there? I don't know. I suppose I should decide. It's going to be like this for a while. I think more around that way. I think more that way. Gives you a much better root system. You start to the back one. Yep, I'm happy with that. I'll just have a look at the camera. Remember, always stand behind the camera and have a look. See what you think. Yeah, that root system is looking pretty suave. Pretty bloody suave. Might even be time for one of me drinks out of me homemade cup. Right, let's get to it, let's get it potted up. So now all I'm gonna do is put some succulent mix in and around the roots. Sort of jiggle it in there. I like to push things in with my fingers, but that way I can feel what it's trying to do. Some people use chopsticks, so I'll, I use my fingers. Just push it in. You know, rattle it in, whatever you want to do. And then once we've done this, I'll put some moss around it. And this tree will have a massive, massive amount of room to grow now. And it's new pot, it's all been cut back pretty hard. The root system. But we should hopefully get some super, super growth this year out of this tree. So really keen to see its growth this year. And I want to try and get a good, a good big strong apex just growing out and really, really create, creating some uh, taper at the top because at the moment, top just sort of gets cut off and that's it. I want to create some good taper at the top. So the idea is um, grow a branch out nice and high and strong. And um, you know, make this tree maybe a third taller than it is now as a final design. Maybe even, no, not twice as tall, but 
possibly close, possibly close to that. Okay. So the finer roots I'm going to still cover. Okay. I'm just going to get in there and really squish around with your fingers, get it in and under all this voids and holes everywhere. Really get it in there. Like I say, this is way over potted, so if you've just jumped into this video and fast forwarded to now, I know it's way over potted. Um, I just want some good strong growth, so I've purposely put it into quite a big pot, and I'm hoping in future that it actually puts on enough growth that it can actually look quite, quite good in a pot this big. And you know, if future plans turn out that it stays in this pot forever, you know, obviously with some repots, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, my plan is to let it really grow out, really get strong, stop trying to hold it back. Um, I will trim it still, but yeah, hopefully we just get a lot of growth and divisions now with this new potting mix. Right, so I'll just expose some of these roots now, these good ones. It's a problem isn't it? You expose these roots and what happens is the roots get dirty, same colour as your potting mix, and it becomes very hard to distinguish between your roots and your soil. So you don't get to, the root system doesn't really pop out too well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush it away as much as I can, and then I'm going to put some nice moss in between so that we can see. Right guys, I'm ready for the moss, so let's get into it. I'll just moss it up on, uh, probably on hyperlapse. Got a nice big tray of moss here. My son collected it in the paddock. He loves collecting his moss trays. And there you go, lots of good moss. Thanks, Seppy boy. Thank you very much. Good day, guys. Welcome back. Well, Still drinking out of my dog bowl here. Bloody beauty. But I'm gonna have to go inside soon and do some work, so. Anyway, finished potting up this tree. So she's ready for spring now. Should be good. Um, as you can see, way over potted. This has an absolutely magnificent root system um, I might try and find a squirt bottle and just clean the roots a little bit with a squirt bottle but really cool so I'll give you guys a spin on the way out um, I'll give the roots a little bit of a clean before then so you guys can see it in you know in its real deal because it is pretty cool the root system on this is crazy really cool it's got pretty good tape for this tree, it's just this top bit letting it down, it needs to grow out um, and get some stronger branching. But anyway, cheers for watching Aussie Thumbs Up Bloke, please like, share, subscribe, tell your mates about the channel. Um, cross your fingers, I don't get in trouble with the missus because I was meant to be inside doing some uh, housework before we get some visitors. but. 
I couldn't be bloody stuffed. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going in there now, don't worry. I'm gonna go and pay my dues. Um, just gonna give you guys a spin on the way out, but I'm just gonna clean the tree first with a bit of water.